Uh, hi, I'm Steven. I'm Alex, or DZ Grader. Uh, we are doing commentary for the first round of the top cut of Netrunner West Coast Nationals. Uh, this is U.S. Nationals. Voila. Uh, I so this is actually at least one of these players. <laughs> so this is actually me playing on the left. Um, I I was the bubble boy, or the the last one into the cut. I guess bubble boy is the first one out of the cut. Um, <laughs> And uh, Chris is a good friend, actually stayed with the two of us at my parents' house when he we went to Cascadia uh, a month ago. Yeah, he's in the Bay Area now. Yes, he uh, used to be San Diego. Uh, yeah, I think he's Berkeley or Oakland, uh, maybe Berkeley, um, but also used to live in San Diego, so he knows a lot of the Southern California people too. I did not know he was coming down to this tournament. I was very excited to see him. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he had responded that he was coming. Um, so, but I think it was something where our pushing the tournaments at Cascadia and on Slack and Discord helped encourage him. And there was one other person from San Francisco that came as well. Yeah, we got a pretty strong turnout. Although I wish we'd had the two more to do uh, a cut to eight instead of four. Yeah, so we ended up with twenty three so people, and twenty five is the recommended minimum for a top eight. Makes sense. You kind of want less than a third of the people to make the cut, uh, but uh, top four was a brutal cut to try to try to get to. I think there were uh, maybe like four or five people with the same record as me that did not make the cut, uh, so that felt bad. So it looked like Chris kept, and you took them all. I did them all. Yes. What's his ID? Uh, so he's on Asa Group, uh, which is oh. makes sense. Chris is a very like efficient, uh, I would say, kind of good stuff player, and Asa is just a really efficient ID um, that uh, gets you an extra click of value almost every turn. I was on Asa that day just because the Managarm form carry interaction was too silly not to try to abuse. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. Hmm. I think. That's the more fun Asa. Um, I think Chris is on an Asa that's extremely similar to the one that Soka won Omiya Continentals with. Um, so I think he's got one biotic, no seamless launches, which seems kind of surprising uh, for a scoring deck. But I think what happens is that most of the time when you really need it, you've got that extra three credits for a biotic uh, versus a seamless launch. Uh, but biotic has the advantage that once you get to five points, you can just like close the game out with a fast advance. I am a believer in using bass instead of biotic out of Asa. Uh, it's a little more vulnerable, but it helps so much with like the fully operational triggers. Uh, that's also true. Moving in on your yes, you also uh, basic triggers. Yeah. You do get true. to leave, usually, but... Which is also a prize in itself. <laughs> You're on a uh, oh, good stuff deep dive yeah. sable? Yeah, so it's, uh, okay, it's a sable yeah. that also has N'Golo. Um, I mostly put that in there for some of the big ice that like Atea and Outfit play um, that are often like five or six strength. Um, before I had the Angolo, I think I had uh, spent that influence on Dr. Nuka instead, and the draw was nice, but not not totally necessary. So Sable gets to pick a mark every turn, so I use a die for that. Looks like I roll R and D on the first turn. Uh, if Sable successfully rolls that, uh, draws, runs that, uh, they get a click back. Um, probably not going to run this this turn now. Uh, so that's a, who is higher seed here? Who picked the matchup? Uh, Chris picked the matchup. Uh, Mike Corp was uh, Thule or Thule, and uh, it had not lost the game yet today. Chris did not want to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, this is a scary matchup too. Asa generally doesn't find it very easy to lock down the central. True. Um, but in this case, had a really good, like this is the ideal start, uh, especially if that's a Rashida. Um, oh, okay. Oh, so this is. Uh, that uh, is clearly you're thinking what you were thinking, which is let's get that Rashida turn one. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's a Nico campaign. 
Um, I so more okay with letting that fire, but I will still kill it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, not as important to stop, but still, you you don't you don't mind it. It's Trash credit positive the first turn. It's a good yeah, card. which is always interesting. The Maryland campaign, a lot of those other econ ones are not. And overwrite. Okay. And then click three, I will take a credit. So this is trash. trash. And this is here, stranded. No, uh, that's trash. Oh, it's trash. It's, it is literally in the city. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, so the ice with boomerang on it was overwritten. I think it is still. Uh, no, oh, we're discussing whether the boomerang gets trashed or not. Um, it does not get trashed. Yes. It's not hosted, it just picks like Femme. Yeah. Yep. That's so good. Oh, so I skillfully got a archives mark here. Uh, and so I'm now playing bankroll to get money. So I get uh, three credits from a carpe diem, I get one credit on the bankroll, and I get my click back. So really good value there. Yes. Yeah, pretty lucky pull. So is that boomerang oh. just like stuck on the table until you draw another one? Carpe yeah, diem. I mean it's essentially yeah. the same as if it had been discarded. Three. Not a, not a big deal. It it Three. could be slightly better if I was say playing against an MBN and I needed to uh, steal that agenda where you have to shuffle two things into yeah. back into your deck. Uh, reeducation? No, no, it's not reeducation. Uh, it's a uh, degree mill maybe. Oh, that's it. Oh, and so because I have ran archives, I get Carmen for three credits. Uh, so one thing, <laughs> one thing against uh, Acer Group is you really don't want to let uh, Drafter fire. Um, so I'm very careful about running uh, without a uh, Carmen. One thing to note, though, is Carmen has to spend four to break Drafter. So you actually want to uh, break it with Turtle eventually, if you can. Uh, here, I'm running into MIC. Um, so I think I ran it on last click. And MIC has two subs that both steal a click and then end the run. So kind of the best possible time to run that. It's not just an enigma. It's like uh, one of those one, logic puzzles. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is this is looking quite good for me. Uh, the Corp only has three credits because MIC was six to res. Um, meanwhile, I have lots of credits and, and lots of cards installed. Well, I guess really only two cards that matter, but Bankroll and Carmen are quite good. Okay, so here I play Pinhole Threading to uh, try to trash a Rashida behind MIC, and it's not a Rashida, it is a uh, Luminal Transubstiation, so that that made me really sad. Oh! You got an inside job? I, I do not have inside job in this deck. And he's got enough credits to score it, but maybe you could pressure the centrals to, uh, since he's not going to want to spend those credits to res. Yep. And I think that's exactly my thinking here, is that I know he needs three credits to score that. Run HQ. Yep. So that's why I run HQ here. Not enough uh, clicks for a doof. Maybe you don't have a doof. I have no idea what's going uh, I think I was, if I had a doof, I think I was one credit short. A one click short. One I mean. click short, yeah. Ooh. Oh, so I just I rip an off world office. Um, so exactly because of that logic you're talking about, I I know that Chris needs every single credit to uh, score this. I'm going to one, two, three, take three credits. <laughs> but that is the ideal if you have to go to zero scoring an agenda, I guess off world office is the ideal one, but uh, Luminal is not bad because you get three more clicks to click for credits. Yeah, that's sad to see that he wasn't able to use his ASA trigger, though. He's got a remote that you can't get into, and he was not able to jam anything in it with one of those three clicks. That's true. Yeah, that indicates he maybe doesn't have a Rashida in hand, which is something yeah. you would probably jam, even if it meant you had to be at two clicks. Getting, that two Nico, getting another Nico in there would be so good right now. True. So this is a bravado on R and D. It's not a seven credit bravado with Jack out after the last dice. Though. Well, but it's uh, 
I, it is a profit of four credits plus a bankroll plus a click. It's pretty good. Uh, the seven credit one in reference to Albert's play in the Albert Jammin Swiss one. Yeah, <clears throat> that was impressive. So my bankroll is up to six credits now. Oh, and so I just rip a Vitruvia. So that's two HQ runs, two agendas. Um, that's that's called skill. Was I, was I wrong about Chris keeping? I saw you mull, but maybe he mulled as well, and I just missed it. Uh, I think he kept. I mean, remember, his first turn he installed that's true. three he got that ice, he got ice and a Nika. So he was not splitted on his initial hand. Do you remember that practice game where you had two bankrolls with 10-plus credits on each? <laughs> Yeah, I I've been really liking bankroll. Um, I mean, it's it's less good against like really glaciery matchups, but most of the time I still make a profit of like four or five against glacier and um, you know against like Asa. They Asa really doesn't want to ice archives because they want to have all their ice set up fully operational. Um, so you're almost always going to have archives available. An unpurgeable fermenter that you can accelerate to your to your taste. Yeah, it's also it's quite nice against if you have to go tag me for a while. Um, it is market forces proof, and not a ton of people playing retribution right now. Oh, so that is good value, bravado. Get all that money and then trash a analytic void for only one credit. It might be a manic arm or even a tranquility in the remote. He put him in on the same turn, so there'd be no reason to res a tranquility. He hasn't had a win. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop it. All right. Quit it. <laughs> so I'm now at six points with also a ton of credits. Uh, Chris has two points with only three credits, so it's looking looking very good for me here. Run. HQ. Okay. No runs. Okay. But it is it's an example of like obviously I'm getting lucky on these accesses, but it also shows how the economic state of the game affects these things because obviously I wouldn't be making these yeah, R and D yeah. and HQ runs if. Yep. If uh, Chris could afford to res ice there. Um, and we did just see a seamless in his hand. So he's updated the deck. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's. It, I. I forgot his exact deck. I remember it was similar ish to uh, Soka's, but it was not identical. Let's go ahead and. Oh, I see some gatekeepers in Chris's hand. Um, that's a. Very solid install. ice. Install. Okay, so that's not... Always make sure on Asa to install the one oh. in the root first, uh, because the the second one can't be an agenda. I if you saw my finger point there, that was literally me saying. <laughs> so that's not an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Chris was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> shouldn't have done that." Uh, the cut was played the same day as the Swiss, so we're all a little bit tired here. Not not necessarily making perfect plays with every <laughs> with every play. Okay. Um, then I will. This is prior to your pre gaming for the finals. <laughs> it's true. I took a drink break um, later in the cut. So we know that that's not an agenda, but still, given how low on money Chris is, it, it makes sense to check for economy assets. Yeah. I would not be surprised if it's a Rashida. It's another wage worker. That's a tough call. I mean, you've got plenty of money right now. So I think what I'm thinking here is I haven't 
installed Miss Bones yet, and so um, I might money. just leave it until I get Miss Bones out. You're, you are setting him up for a much stronger fully operational by leaving it, though. Yeah. Oh, you know what? And I think I had seen a fully op, too, so I definitely thought about this, but I guess I ended up not doing it. Those are fives, right? You're on 17 credits plus a massive bankroll? Yes. That's gross. And six points. And I think, actually, I have deep dive in hand here, and I probably should have just deep dived because Chris couldn't res any of the centralized. Yeah. And probably would have just won here. Um, I, I feel like I took a click or two and then realized, like, oh, I should just be deep diving. <laughs> That's why I consider trashing it. <laughs> yeah, deep dive is so. Uh, it, it, it's straightforward, but it's a little tricky because it feels like a finisher. You know, you're spending yeah. this whole turn, all of these credits to get through everything, and then you're going to close out the game. But it's a lot easier to to pull off earlier in the game before they have so much ice up on the True. central. So, so yeah, you can you do it. You're like really blowing your wad for a bit. Yeah, so you wouldn't now... have been that turn on when he was on two credits. Yep. So Chris now has ten credits, so that easy deep dive is is not available anymore. So this is the last tournament uh, that DreamNet was still legal. Um, so not as important to Sable as it is to Hoshiko because it does not give you a credit, um, but it's still a draw almost every turn with Sable, which is nice. So up to 25 credits plus something like 20-ish on bankroll, too. I can't 13. Oh, maybe less. I felt like you need to trash them right now. Okay, yep, you, you had it. Mandatory draw. That's another fully up. All right, let's see another Asa server, a big fully op. Oh, so Asa does spend an ice on archives. Uh, I think the combination of Bankroll and DreamNet provided so much pressure that decided to use that to ice archives instead of make a even bigger fully op. Uh, but that's that's tough. That's against anyone but Sable with DreamNet and Bankroll. You probably make a bigger fully op there. One. Uh, it's probably the right call. I'm just very demoralized looking at that bankroll. Like, it's so big anyway. 25 credits. Is he really going to ever be able to tax you out before you score something? I, I guess he really has to try to stop the deep dive, though. True. It's stable. Yep. It's definitely a deep dive. There's no stable that's not deep dive. Uh, there was one, uh, I think Rotom Appliance built a non-deep dive Sable, um, and it did quite well in, I think, Amiya. I think it went top four in Amiya. I'm so. sure it's got to be built on the assumption that the opponent thinks it's deep dive. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But I think Sable, I mean, I, I think most of the time it makes sense to put deep dive in there, but Sable's also just very efficient, so, um, doesn't hurt to, uh to just build good stuff stable. If you don't like deep dive for some reason, you can still play it. Yep. Install. Ah, so Chris does this in the correct order, puts the uh, card the, in the server first so that it, you don't know whether it's an agenda or not. And take a credit. Uh, click one. He's got a good uh, amount of ice that he's drawn. Yep. All right, so class act into Diesel. That's seeing a lot of cards. Hopefully finds the rest of the breakers. Maybe at this point, he wants to try to like push out before you get your Fractor and your Decoder, because you don't have mm -hmm. those out yet, but maybe he assumes that you have them or a mutual favor or something brewing. Yep. Ah, uh, so I last turn I face planted into a Gatekeeper, which is always a little painful, but the nice thing is that if you've already face planted into one, 
you can play a turtle and then just run right through it. So here I am dirty laundering into archives and just breaking that uh, gatekeeper with a zero strength turtle. It is indeed dirty and in the laundry pile. Was it your mark too? No, your mark's on R&D. Yes. It's not quite as foul as it could have been. Yeah, uh, I think I maybe forget to take Dreamnet there too. Oh, and then Hermes, one of my favorite cards. I was a huge Delilah player back in the day. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I discard a wake implant um, because I have deep dive in hand, and that just seems more important. I, I don't want to accidentally hit that. Yeah. I love the, uh, I don't know if ambiguity is the right word, of wake in Krim. Mm -hmm. This Krim is the worst at recursion of any of the runner factions, and yet they were given all these cybernetics that ping stuff out of their hands. Yeah, I... One of my favorite things about Krim is like running games where I lose one of my breakers. Like I feel like there are so many ways to win without like your sentry breaker or your barrier breaker or something like that. Between inside job, boomerang, uh, maybe you have a one of turtle or something, but uh, there's just a lot of fun ways to win even without all your breakers. So don't don't fear the damage too much. What are you zooming on? <laughs> oh no, so Chris plays Seamless here. It was very confusing because I think the only legal target for it was like the wage workers that was already installed. Oh no. Uh, but Chris was thought he it was a to fast advance something? No, he thought it was a fully up. Oh. So, so did he take it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just took it back. Um but you know, obviously he, he and, thought he was going to get fully up there. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, before you do that, um, He's played two, to move I think. Over to here. Okay. Sounds like that. Makes sense. Okay, yeah, I so love that, how mobile Bobo is. Like that's Bobo's great. Uh, archives again. And he's, he's got it in the right spot. The full uh, threat so, is activated. Uh, he's got that triple ice. Click one. He's ready to go. But of course so, you have a billion credits. Yeah, so I just uh, rolled the right mark. So I got archives, which means I can get my turtle up to two for free. I can get uh, it up to three counters for one real click. I can get it up to four counters for two real clicks. And I get my click back. So are you going to power it up and force the remote? Uh, that's certainly an option. Uh, MIC is four strength, so you could contest that. Yep. You got plenty of credits for the Mandagarm tax. Yeah, and I think the Anoetic is still in archives. Hmm. Maybe there's more than one. It's a lot of influence. Four, four influence, I think. Hmm. Might even be five. Oh, it's magnet. Uh, four influence. Okay, so I run HQ once I get to three. And. Oh, I think I ran it with two strength. So then the magnet broke, uh, stopped me, which is slightly inefficient. Oh, diversion of fun. So instead of challenging the remote, I just take Chris down to no money. Oh, those are. I heard somebody was on coup counters for their yep. credits. It's Chris. I love them. I did not notice those till now. Okay, so there's the anoetic going back into R and D. So maybe I should have contested there, but also diversion down to four credits felt pretty good. Yeah. Now, if he spends his turn uh, scoring something out, presumably he's going to be 
poor enough that you can land the dive next turn pretty easily. Unless it's an office who's scoring. Yeah, which is unfortunately oh, a danger because of Seamless. It's a spin. He's scoring oh, wow. a spin. <laughs> That's not what so, you want to see right there. But it does mean that I was right not to run it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I necessarily called that. <laughs> So Chris has done a pretty good job of fighting back here from a, a really bad start. He's now got a nice board um, and a decent scoring remote, um, especially if he draws into Anoetic. What do you think's over in the other remotes? He didn't res them. They're well, not no, like so we, we know that one is a Wage Workers. Um, the other one could be the third spin. It could be... What else could it be? A, a Nico, maybe? Though he probably would have rested by now. I'm a little surprised he's spinning back a wage when he's already got one on the board. But maybe he's True. just assuming you're going to trash it at some point. Yeah, that makes sense. And gain two from the Tranquility Home Grid. I will not trigger Asa. And then I will discard, discard you. Okay. This is... Um, Vovo's pretty good on the remote. Um, I would also consider moving it to R&D. That's a good point. But he is probably thinking that I'll be tempted to run it. It's definitely worth considering trashing, but... So that strongly signals that the one that he put in the remote is also a mana guard. Because otherwise, wouldn't he really have wanted to include that mana guard on his last install with the Ace of Trigger? Yeah, yeah that's true. And that may be why it didn't trash it from HQ. I'm sad he doesn't have something jammed in the remote. He really, like, okay. has got to have something happening on the board. Yep. Good. Next click, I'll run here. Okay. Guess I'm not the only one that wanted to know what was in that remote. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. No res. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Not popping the third spin doctor. Um, last two clicks, all they break yeah. funds. One to break magnet. Uh, well, sorry, one for the event. One to break magnet. Are you going to... Oh, I, yeah, I don't know if you're on so many credits. Yeah, it's not like taxing you for so two more is going to do much. Maybe he doesn't want you to get more um, good counters. Yeah, or just doesn't want anything that's in the uh, archives. Yeah, that's fair. A Nico? Why did oh, the so Manicar come down with that? Yeah, so this is also really interesting. So there's a Vovo in there. Vovo, once it's threat four, says it reduces the res cost of cards in the root of the server by two. It's not optional. So Chris is not able to burn any money by resing that Nico campaign, and I get a full four credits from him. Uh, where are you getting four credits from? Because uh, I doofed. Oh. Uh, but oh. If, if not for the Vovo, he could have ducked yeah. down to two credits. Yeah. But Vovo's not optional. Okay. Well, there it is. I'm surprised it didn't come down last turn. And I heard yeah. him on the audio, like, intentionally not off the trigger. So maybe uh -huh. he had multiple mana arms in hand, or he's trying to fluff it out because there's an agenda he was hiding in there. Yeah, maybe. So I pay two. I 
Impressive economic recovery to go from zero all the way up to uh, seven. Yeah, he's on eight. Eight, yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, that's a good purge. Uh, you're yep. only on Carmen and Turtle still. Yeah, and especially um, the Magnet. Even if I got N'Golo, it's three to break it with uh, N'Golo. Okay. So you'd rather break it with Turtle? Well, depending on the other ice on R&D, uh, your next turn could still be something like Archives. Oh, no, no. You can't get through them. Sorry, I, would, I forgot it would, it would purge again. I was thinking okay. you could get a counter on Archives and R&D. So I ran R&D here and then played uh, Mutual Favor for N'Golo. So down to only 12 real credits, but of course, like, probably about 20 on the bankroll. Uh, then I will... Play a Docklands Pass for two. Um, and I will run HQ. Cost three to break, unfortunately. Yep. yep so, um, using a non-turtle breaker for the first time this game. Yep. Spending three with Angola. Carmen hasn't broken anything. That's true. But it's made me not so terrified of drafter. So. Okay. Biota and Tattoo Bola. Access. We've seen yeah. that Tattoo Bola for a while. I'm surprised it hasn't gone down on a central. True. It's not. <laughs> great at keeping turtle out but it is decent economy yeah i mean he's been hurting a little bit for credits okay. last click running the wage workers i guess it hasn't been super obvious where you're gonna pressure oh here's a tattoo a bola it's such a good card yeah it's a little overpowered probably like probably should just give three when you replace it but you know it's it enables a lot of fun shenanigans so and Kinteki was like hurting so bad for good econ until this last set uh, they're like having to run celebrity gift and Hansei review in decks that don't really want to run those things but now they've got tattoo bola and mindscaping I'm just going to go ahead and res this for free. Okay. Whilst I can. Yep. So this was maybe a mistake by me. I knew he had a seamless. Mm -hmm. I had accessed it. Um, and I, I ran the wage workers, but, you know, it doesn't prevent scoring a 4 2, which I believe Chris does right here. Yep. So Chris plays that seamless and then advances twice for an off world office. So pretty pretty solid value when he's got you know an iced uh, a rezzed ice on all centrals and you know he gets the money back and all. And then I am going to owe you one card. So it's now four to six, a much much closer game. But he didn't have a credit to jam again or a click to jam again. That's true. Yeah. So it would have been worse <laughs> if the wage workers was alive, but it's still not bad with seamless. Uh, Mark his archives. It feels like a deep dive. Two, it smells like a deep dive. And get one so spending my last real credits to uh, get to R&D. So I think finally going to pop the bankroll. Um, I will take all this money. Yep. Gosh, it doesn't even take a click. All right, fine. Yep. I'll take 23 credits. Gosh. <laughs> all right, 23 credit bankroll. To HQ. Yep. Spend one. This is definitely not two cards. Sounds like the right one. Oh, 
Let's see, Biotic again. And uh, Hagen. Yeah, this looks like a deep dive. Only downside is the turtle goes down to one. All right, here it is. out and a billion credits, so you're pretty still. Okay, whiff. Whiff. Two tranquilities. Mana Garm. Wage workers. Seamless. And a white egg. Total you gotta whip. the Anoetic, right? Wow. Uh, yes. I think the only question is, do you spend an extra click to also trash one other card? Yeah, Rashida is tempting. And do I want to spend a click to trash the Rashida? <laughs> and there it is. Um, no, um, I will not spend a click. There it is. Rashida, <laughs> yeah it's just expensive when you have to spend a whole click to trash something that like you know the deck's still pretty big like he may never draw it all right well you've been letting him uh call his way out and uh, you were just waiting to throw that deep dive down at the most dramatic moment, and now it's passed. Now he's got a now he's got a chance here. Yeah, and I had discarded the waken plant, so not really much multi access left in the deck. Just gotta got drill the heart of the cards. Uh, there is the um, the Docklands on the table. The Docklands. But if you can't crack, you haven't cracked this remote even once, and now it's got a Managarm, and he's throwing down the gauntlet in it. So this is uh, this is. Representing game points, uh, Chris is at four with a double advanced agenda. Yeah. You've got Angelo, but if both of those cards in front are barriers, yeah. you're in a hard spot. And MIC is quite good on the last click. Uh, the yeah, last, it's, like, especially if that's Nikawa. Yeah. But you could win elsewhere. Yep. So running R and D here. It's pretty cheap with uh -oh. the zero strength gatekeeper. Yeah, but that's a that's a click that you don't have to rerun um, the remote or spend on the Akala. Yep, maybe maybe a mistake. Maybe you should have challenged the remote first click. Run HQ. Spend three to get through. Okay. Access two. So I do break the magnet with. Uh, in Golo, there's just not really time to charge up the turtle to make it cheaper. First access, Hagen. Oh! Was it out of HQ? It was out of HQ. Second access. Yeah, I drew that on the turn, and I was just like... And what's in the remote, though? Is that also an Ikawa? It was. It was. Yep. Wow. Oh, that was a lot closer than that game looked at the start. Totally. Oh, man. You got those first six points in like three turns. I, I, I yep. could have deep dived really early. I probably should have deep dived really early when you were broke. Yeah. So this is me yeah. talking about how I, I should have deep dived one. earlier. Um, kind of it does make yeah. sense, of course, with so many agendas yeah. stolen and scored like that R&D would be a little bit yeah, less dense. You couldn't have yeah. that many in HQ because um, I was running and seeing It's two. wild that it yeah. came yeah. down to yeah. him yeah. having drawn yeah. I mean, you this one more yeah. Yeah. You, with the yeah. ones, Of course, if it had been the top of R&D, like, I would have got it there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You did a good job of coming back from a really rough Oh, yeah. Start. Yeah. yeah. Such a crazy Docklands ended up saving the day really because that was my second access there. Uh, if I had missed it, yeah, I, I could have gone remote. into HQ one more time Probably not. Probably not. and tried to get a one and five. But of course, on the fourth click, I would not have been able to steal a Kawa. Yeah, so. like the, the unres dice was a brand and a uh, border control. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a border control in that remote. Yeah, that so is, yeah. I, I don't think I could have challenged it. How many cards did he have in HQ on that run? Uh, five. So it was a 40% chance of hitting it on that run. And then if I had gone back in one more time, the then there'd be another 20% chance of hitting it. Kept going back in and then hit it on last click. Yeah. So kind of like a 50-50 well, I mean, situation you, if, probably not. I if run HQ a bunch. you identify that the line is to run HQ. 
I mean, if yeah. I math out, the, that was click two that you ran HQ. I think it is my best on. Yes. Either so I had one time. more chance to steal it if I missed there. I'm not listening to you on the on the VOD, but would you were, would you have tried to push the remote, or did you have that read to hammer HQ? You've already uh, hammered R and D and HQ, so it looked like you were going for the central. Uh, yeah, I don't think I would have challenged the remote, but I might have thought about it for a little bit. Done it before. What a wild game. Yeah. This deck, but, uh, not your uh, your econ yeah, no, dominance we'll looked so solid up to the end, and then despite that, you weren't strong enough to challenge that remote. Yeah. I had a lot of not agenda out of your HQ too, though. Yes, but it didn't help at the beginning when you were doing the that click taxing is tough too. Like, you know, get points and you know use the off world office. I have there was like two seamless in that. Yeah, imagine if there were uh, Jaguarundis or pulses or something there too. Yep. Uh, I didn't want to I might see though is is pretty out, good for that. But like then I'm on zero credits and yeah.